supply chain management consists of three core activities. The first being the making of a product. The second being the packing. And the third is the shipping of the product to the customer. It is generally accepted that the making will always lead to the packaging and will always then move to the shipping. Under the make banner, we have sub activities such as demand planning, the purchasing of the raw materials that we want to convert, the inbound or the receipt um, of the raw materials, the storage of these materials, and finally converting the materials into the finished goods, i.e. production. Under the packing activities, we have order management. We also have the storage of the finished goods. And lastly, we have warehouse activities, such as the picking of the material and the preparation of the material in order for it to be shipped, i.e. the packaging. Under the shipping activities, we have the sub-activities of the logistics execution and we have transportation. In this course, we'll be covering the logistics processes which include the goods receipt or inbound, the storage of the materials, the order management, the storage of the finished goods, the activities in the warehouse such as picking and the packaging, the logistics execution and the transportation. So why is this important? Why is it important to have an effective supply chain? The first is cost. By squeezing out inefficiencies in this process we reduced our costs and improve the company's profit margin. The second is something called competitive advantage. In today's complex world, in a globalized world, where we have materials that are made in one country and shipped all across the world to be sold, we need to be able to efficiently move materials quickly in all of these locations into all of the marketplaces that we desire. Also, an efficient supply chain will enable us to be flexible in dealing with demands that are required in the marketplace. The supply chain can actually be broken up into seven smaller work streams and each work stream is fairly self-contained. But for now, let's have a look at how all of these streams are joined together in a single coherent supply chain. So it actually starts here um, with the product development. So you develop the product here and you start as part of it, you do your marketing and you do your product development. Once you have agreed that this is the product that you want, you've started the manufacturing process, the first thing you do is you do your procurement. So this is actually number one, and this is actually number two. So you start your procurement process, which covers supplier relationship and your purchase orders. So these two things happen first. So you purchase all the raw materials, and as part of that purchasing program, you then have your inbound delivery. So I will put an, a little star and say L. So this is a logistics process in the supply chain. So I'll just put a little L here so we know it's a logistics process and you can see how we're going to cover it. Again, we also as part of the purchasing, we have the payments. And when the inbound deliveries uh, come in, we also store it. So another L. It's part of logistics. Again, so how do you store the materials?
Once you have done this, you then, once you have the materials, you then start the manufacturing process. So this is what they call, so this is step three, and this is usually a, what we call the core make process. Now, again, we have here storage, which is L, uh, because it's part of logistics, and you also have as part of the storage movements. Now, this sometimes is covered under logistics because it's storage here and it's storage here and they're really the same. So what you're saying is you're taking it out of storage yeah, and then you're issuing it so as part of the storage here yeah, you are then uh, moving it through and you're issuing it. So you issue the material into production obviously it's red because it's part of the logistics. Now there's also a planning part here. Uh, planning part comes partly from marketing and partly also from what we call demand. So demand here. So once you finish your production again you put it in storage and that's it. In effect, this process has finished. On the flip side, so let me just make a little yeah, so we know that it's it's in a in a separate box. We then move on to order management. Now, while when you look on the base of it, there is no logistics on it. I am going to mark this as links to logistics. Now the order management is all about taking the order from the customer, generating the sale, um, agreeing with the customer when the product can be delivered. Once you have captured all of this, you then transfer it to the warehouse management, in which case they do the picking, they do some warehouse handling units. So all three of these are related to order management picking from the warehouse. You might have um, some handling unit as well. Now, the intersite transfers is not actually part of customer service orders by default. This one is just really part of storage because you might store the materials in one plant or you might store it in another. It is part of logistics because you're transferring materials one from another but it really has nothing to do with the order side. Once you have that or, or once we've covered that you then have your transportation so once you've completed your picking you do your transportation which is your vehicles or how to get to the customer and the delivery process. We'll have a look at all of these. As I said, I'll make an L here um, because they are part of logistics. So you've done your picking, you then do your delivery, you do your transportation, then you get it to the customer. Now, after this, there's actually an additional process. I'll put it in a different, slightly different color here, which is the invoicing. Now, the invoicing is not mentioned anywhere else in our lecture because it's not really it's not part of the supply chain management. Invoicing is part of the order we will see later, part of the order to cash and a link to order management, but within the supply chain it has slightly smaller relevance. Now, we might use invoicing for exports, for example, but it's not really considered part of the supply chain. Whether you have invoicing, how you do it, um, it's a little bit outside. So, um, there you have it. Now, subcontracting actually is part of production. Production and procurement. Subcontracting is a type of production and actually 
is part of the make process actually because you're making it even though it's it's outside now we will mark it as an L because we need to ship it so L because we need to ship we need to ship it to the vendor so we will see that later on and lastly what is quite important but not covered in this topic is performance management so the question is how good Now, this is an important question. How good are you doing? Um, but again, while it's included in the supply chain management, it's not included in, in general, uh, logistics. Because it's nothing to do. It's more of a, usually, it goes to finance. So here is, you can see the supply chain. You can see all the different components. You can also see the red parts are the logistics side. We will go through all of those. We'll go through the blue uh, items in blue also because they're quite important to us. But just note that while we go through some of the core logistics, there are things that are not included in uh, as part of logistics, such as purchase order, payments, marketing, planning, production. That is part of the supply chain. So here's the same slide again, but this time let's have a look at what we're going to cover in SAP. Unlike all other courses out there, this course is just not going to cover a particular module. It's not going to cover a single module and look at it all in depth. What we are going to do is look at each module and look at the logistics parts in each of these different modules. So for example, the procurement is actually in inventory management or material management so that's actually one course order management is actually in sales and distribution and physical distribution warehouse management is usually in logistics execution so what we're going to do is in each of these different modules we're actually going to have a look at the functionality in SAP of the logistics parts the advantage of this is that it gives us a broad end-to-end -end understanding of how these different components across different modules interact together to form a complete and coherent supply chain. So to recap, in this course we'll be covering the inbound and intersite transfers, order management and the deliveries, the picking both in inventory management and a functionality called Lean WM, packing, goods issue, and transportation. And in transportation, we'll be looking at the planning, shipping, processing, and something called evaluated receipt settlement. To round out the course, we'll be also looking at the most popular business scenarios in SAP, the enterprise structure, and the master data. So, in closing, by the end of this course, you should be able to describe the overall logistic processes in the supply chain, understand how they are executed in SAP, understand the most common business scenarios in SAP, and be able to configure the modules in the logistic supply chain. And these modules could be IM or WM, sales and distribution, or logistics execution, which includes transportation.